The brand new trailer for Ghostbusters Frozen Empire has just been released with a release date of this upcoming spring, 2024. The film will be the fourth installment to the original Ghostbusters saga and also the fifth entry in the franchise the other being Ghostbusters 2016. And Frozen Empire will serve as a direct sequel and continuation of where the story left off in 2021's Ghostbusters Afterlife. Today, we'll break down and analyze every scene in this new trailer and piece together what this new story will be about exactly, what to expect, and also to theorize on what we could end up seeing. My first reaction to this trailer will be included as well at the end of the video. If you want to watch that first, well, you can skip to the time on the screen. With that, let's bust our ways right into it. And for a quick message before we begin, make sure you subscribe to the channel for much more content like this and all Ghostbusters Frozen Empire news as soon as it breaks. I'll try my best to be the first channel here to cover everything that's the latest on the upcoming film, so you won't want to miss it. The trailer opens with Cruel Summer by Bananarama, a song released in 1983 that was used in the first Karate Kid movie and along with its sequel revival series Cobra Kai, both Sony properties. We see establishing shots of New York City, the setting for the first two films in the franchise, of course, and it's from a news report that we learn that the summer this film takes place during is expected to be a hot one, feeling like 100 degrees with heat warnings in effect. Some beautiful cinematography cements that it's summertime and people are out enjoying themselves just as paranormal occurrences hit the island. Some type of storm quickly starts moving in on New York, with falling icicles impaling the nearby sand, chasing off beachgoers. Everything then starts to freeze as the icy storm overtakes the city, the same icicles now rising from the ground in dangerous manners. The freezing ice leads us into our first look at the iconic hook and ladder fire station, the headquarters of the Ghostbusters, back in operation for the first time since 1989. A newly modified Ecto-1 starts tearing up the streets of New York, retaining its classic look with some small upgrades. The pipes on the side of the vehicle are now a metallic silver, contrasting their original yellow look. The Ecto has also since been fixed up since the events of Ghostbusters Afterlife. All cleaned, no more rust, and looking better than ever. McKenna Grace reprises her role as Phoebe Spangler, Egon's granddaughter, and she's wearing the Ghostbusters flight suit with some ice on it. Finn Wolfhard and Celeste O'Connor return as Trevor Spangler and Lucky, with a new character standing alongside them, someone we haven't seen before. Patton Oswalt's character remarks that this is the first time in New York's history where people froze to death during the month of July, as we see just that. Two men frozen to death inside, icicles lining the room. Now it is possible this scene is a flashback judging by the clothing all the men are wearing in this scene. There seems to be a Victorian era style going on, but it's hard to pinpoint if this is the time period or if this is the present day and these people are just fancy and well dressed. This apartment door has ice overcome it before being smashed down to the floor as dark clouds push in. I do think this scene in the movie will feature a physical ghost and won't be just just dark clouds, and the reason for that is because we saw the same thing in the Ghostbusters Afterlife trailers, where the ghosts were omitted, but other effects were left in. This could be not to spoil any big plot points or ghosts too early, or it is because they likely haven't finished working on the visual effects just yet. Either way, it's extremely likely we will see either the villain or another ghost here in this shot exactly. Logan Kim returns in this film as his character podcast, him and Phoebe looking much older this time around, meaning this film probably will take place in the present day just as Afterlife was set in 2021. And following this scene is a scene with an original Ghostbuster, Ray Stance, back in the saddle with Dan Aykroyd returning to the role. Phoebe asks what the strange freezing phenomenon is, and Ray says it's called the Death Chill. Since Ray is the most insightful about the paranormal, he probably knows what this situation is and will work with the new Ghostbusters to try and rectify it. Perhaps there's an entry for the death chill in Tobin's spirit guide. Winston Zedmore is officially back, Ernie Hudson stepping into the role once again, along with Bill freaking Murray as Peter Venkman. If this doesn't make your inner nerd scream and freak out, I don't know what else will. In the description of the trailer, Ernie Hudson is billed as a part of the cast, and Annie Potts as well, although we don't see her in this trailer. Everyone listed here probably will be playing main roles in the film, meaning we'll see a lot of Winston thankfully. However, Bill Murray's name is not included. Of course, if you're familiar with the complicated behind-the-scenes lore of the franchise, you'll know Murray protested against a third film all throughout the 90s and 2000s, right up to the passing of Harold Ramis. 
Arguably, he's the reason that the third installment was never made sooner. He reprised his role as Venkman in not only the 2009 video game, but also Ghostbusters Afterlife, which was very pleasant to see. It's great to see him again as well, but I fear we won't get to see much. In fact, I do think it's possible Peter Venkman may die in this entry. Murray campaigned for the character's death in a potential third film, however it was never made. With little involvement, it raises the chances of that happening. In this scene, Peter is wearing the classic jumpsuit and ready for action, with Winston by his side. Zedmore's proton pack also has some caution stripes back here, something typically not seen on them. This means that Winston is wearing one of the newly modified proton packs. Thanks to GhostbustersNews.com, we have a better look at these new packs and their cosmetic changes. As you can see, there's those caution stripes again. As for their practicality, I'm not really sure what their function is outside of a basic cosmetic change. The bumper around the cyclotron has also been updated, sticking out a little further, wrapping around the bottom of the pack, and now yellow. Again, it's unclear at this time whether or not this is a new update for the pack's features or if it's just for looks. The wand has also seen some upgrades, more of that yellow coloring, a new handle grip, and a metallic barrel where the proton streams shoot out, with the original acrylic barrel inside the metal casing. The infamous lion statue at the New York Public Library, an iconic location in the first film, comes to life, obviously possessed. It turns its head and roars directly at Ray, causing him to fall down. The doors of the firehouse also get ripped off in the following scene, sucked out to a dark and cloudy street with some Ghostbusters standing inside. It seems to be Phoebe standing here with a new piece of technology in hand, and whoever is standing next to her with the newly modified proton pack. The ground then cracks open leading into the fire hose and those sharp icicles stabbing their way out, stopping right before the ecto and nearly hitting Trevor, Gruberson, and Callie. Down in the basement of the fire hose, the containment grid is starting to crack and burst through the cement walls. We know if that happens, every ghost caught in it will be unleashed upon the city. And that's how Walter Peck may play into this story because, well, we will be seeing him in this film. Now we finally get a shot of this film's new big bad, some kind of horned ice villain. In this shot, the deity pushes his horns into his head as if he's attaching them. Quite evidently, he does look quite menacing and a villain type we haven't seen before in this franchise. And the next shot shows off this new character, wearing the Ghostbusters winter jacket we see later in the trailer. Whether or not he's a member of the Ghostbusters is unknown, maybe just an honorary one, but he will be wearing the jacket. It's also too difficult to make out what his name tag says, so as of right now, he's completely unnamed. We also saw him with Trevor and Lucky in an earlier shot. I've heard rumors and speculation that he's the son or grandson of Lewis Tully, and I mean, it's a total shot in the dark. He could be, he could not be, it's impossible to say right now, but from the letters we do see on the name tag, it does not say Tully. There's a nice shot here of Phoebe, Callie, and Gruberson all suited up in the original suits with the packs, investigating something. Then we see Lucky start to literally freeze to death as Ray gives a voiceover explaining the horrendous process of the death one goes through as a result of the death chill. Ice completely overtakes Lucky, and as Ray says, the last thing you see is your own tear ducts freezing up exactly what is happening to Lucky. No, I don't think she'll die here, she will be fine. She ended up getting possessed by a terror dog in the last film, and I can't see them killing off one of the young Ghostbusters. Finally, we see Patton Oswalt's character here, and by the looks of things, he works at Ray's occult bookstore. We saw him alongside Ray in the trailer, and then again here, surrounded by books. Judging by his outfit and the employee identification card hanging around his neck, I'm confident to say that he's an employee of Ray's. For one of the juiciest shots, we see the villain once again, and this guy is some menacing. As you can see, he has elongated horns, a very tall and thin figure, with lanky fingers that look like their feet long, really resembling the look of a Wendigo. The trailer then ends with our main cast, Trevor, Gruberson, Callie, and Phoebe atop a building with a chilly, apocalyptic New York behind them. They're all wearing the new coats with the modified packs, and Phoebe with the PKE meter while Callie has the ecto goggles on her head. This is a very exciting shot and probably takes place close to or during the third act of the film. The description of this trailer, which gives us an idea on what the film will be about, says this. In Ghostbusters Frozen Empire, the Spangler family returns to where it all started. 
the iconic New York City firehouse. To team up with the original Ghostbusters who've developed a top secret research lab to take busting ghosts to the next level. But when the discovery of an ancient artifact unleashes an evil force, Ghostbusters, new and old, must join forces to protect their home and save the world from a second ice age. So we know the original Ghostbusters went directly back into operation following the events of Afterlife. And once an ancient evil is unleashed on New York, they must team up with the younger generation. This is a perfect way to incorporate both the young and old Ghostbusters in this new film and have them side by side. And it's raising the stakes very high from the last entry. Afterlife took place in a very quiet, small town with just the threat of Gozer looming over them. Now back in New York, things are automatically on a much bigger stage as this evil force has a grip on the entire city and is threatening much more with a lot more people in harm's way. The budget for this film obviously will be a lot higher because of its setting, cast, story, and everything else, and we'll probably see the use of more CGI. Jason Reitman wanted Afterlife to be smaller scaled, have a smaller budget, and use as many practical effects as possible. Ghostbusters Afterlife also turned a huge profit for Sony because they used such a low budget and made all their money back, so I'm willing to bet they're going to gamble on this one a little more. Afterlife co-writer Gil Keenan is directing this time around instead of Reitman, although Jason has co-wrote this film with him. Thankfully, we do know tools like the slime blower, which is returning, to be practical as you can see in this photo here. So I do have faith Keenan and Reitman will do justice to the franchise, just as they did in the previous installment. Now that will be it for my total breakdown of the Ghostbusters Frozen Empire trailer. My reaction to the trailer will play right now, so if you want to see that, keep watching. But make sure to comment your thoughts and theories below on what you think about this trailer and what you hope to see in the final film. Also, let me know who you think these new characters will be and if you think Peter Venkman may just die. Now, on to the reaction. Hey everyone, so you probably just watched my breakdown for the trailer for Ghostbusters Frozen Empire. Now it's time to take a look at my reaction. I don't know anything about this film. The only thing that I know is that it's called Frozen Empire. It has a theme of things being icy and frozen. And also I do know some of the cast that's in the film from some leaked behind the scenes images uh, while they were filming in New York City. Obviously from the thumbnail and everything else, they are returning to the firehouse. And we know that because the working title was Ghostbusters Firehouse. So I know nothing. I'm a massive Ghostbusters fan. And if you look at this room, you might be able to spot some memorabilia. I got the Proton Pack right here. Uh, there's the four Ghostbusters. There's Walter Peck, Gozer, the No Ghost logo, uh, Funko Pop at the Stay Puft Marshmallow Man. And also here are the 2016 cast as Funko Pop. So big fan of the franchise. I saw Afterlife five times in theaters. I cried every, <laughs> every time. Um, I cried at every trailer, um, and I'm going to try to keep it together for this one, but I'm a massive fan. This franchise means a whole lot to me, so we're going to jump right into this. Let's waste no more time. I'm extremely excited. Cruel Summer? Okay. I love this song from Karate Kid. I'm telling you, it's going to be another hot one out there. In fact, there are heat alerts in effect for New Jersey, feeling like 100 degrees. I love this song. I don't care if I did a copyright claim. I love this song. Beautiful shots as well. Beautiful cinematography. Something's going wrong. What is that? Storm of some kind, it seems. Alright, I'm assuming this is our ice. Oh, wow. This kind of feels like a horror movie. Wow, look at that. Wow! This is impressive. There it is! I just got chills! <laughs> ah, yes! I found! Oh, the chills! For the first time in New York history, people froze to death in the middle of July. What is it? Oh my gosh. The death chill. Yes, Ray! The power to kill. Yes, yes, yes! Yourself. Oh my gosh. Your veins turn to rivers of ice. They're all in the, the uniforms. And the last thing you see... Pat Oswald. Oh, tear ducts freezing up. Like, literally scared to death? <laughs> so cool. 
Oh, is Pat Oswald working at Razor Cole? Wow. I love the jackets. Oh, that's so cool. Wow. Wow, that I I got chills all over me right now. I am so glad to see Ray, Winston, and Peter back. I'm I have to watch that again. I can feel the tears coming to my eyes right now. That was fantastic. Um I'm kind of speechless. I I I need to watch that a couple times over, but looking at those jackets, I really love those jackets. Um, we see Gruberson and Callie, Trevor and Phoebe. So um, I'm not sure if they're going to be our main four Ghostbusters because we also got Podcast and Lucky, and I saw Lucky in a uniform. I'm not sure about Podcast. Uh, we also saw Winston suited up. This is so cool. Such a brand new take. Uh, in this franchise, obviously they're going in a very new, different direction, uh, which I love. Um, this is something we haven't seen before. And those effects were really, really good. The cinematography is fantastic. I told you, trust Gil Kennan. And yeah, this looks really, really good. I'm glad they're back at the fire hose. I'm glad to see it in good shape. I'm glad to see the original guys back. Um... I'm just dying for more now. I'm going to need more. So I'm going to go do the breakdown, which you have already seen. Thank you, everyone, so very much for watching. Um, I'm going to be covering Ghostbusters Frozen Empire, all the news that comes out for it up until its March release in 2024, which is only a couple months away. It's going to be coming up fast. So make sure you subscribe to this channel, like this video to let me know that you enjoy this type of content and subscribe for much more content on Ghostbusters Frozen Empire. Thanks everyone for watching, stay safe, and have a great day.